So uh, the question then is, how long does all of this take, right? Because we want to have some sense of if we do integrate all of this, how much time are we actually saving or how many additional sales can we actually make if we can integrate all these pieces together? And so that's the question we asked ourselves next. And Ryan is going to take you through, take you through some of that. Great. So you'll see here at a high level, we have laid out some of these kinds of tasks that you saw in the flow chart. And then we've assigned uh, time. Now I realize this is small. I'm going to take you into, uh, into the, a more granular view here. It's easier to read momentarily, but you can see that there's a lot of actions, just like there's a lot of steps in that flow chart. Each one of those, has a, an amount of time associated to them, and many of them carry a cost, a licensing cost, staff cost, you know, these kinds of things. Um, so there's there's a lot here that goes into this, and the question is, is how much is this costing you? And, and is there an opportunity to both speed things up and improve your efficiency, as well as improve your profitability, like, like we've mentioned? So let me, uh, let me share my screen, and uh, I will show you uh, this, spreadsheet here. So you'll see here in this spreadsheet, this is where we've we've taken all of the steps in the flowchart and we've mapped time. And we try to give them a range. We understand different uh, companies spend different amounts of time on different tasks. They may have systems or processes in place that vary, the size, the number of classes they run. So you think about this in terms of the numbers that it might be for your organization. But based on our experience doing this ourselves as well as clients that we work with, um, this is this is you know some some ranges that we've seen. So struggling with which video platform to use. Is it Zoom? Is it Join Me? Is it WebEx? Is it Go to Meeting? Go to Webinar? Is it Ring Central? On and on and on. Okay, which ones do we use? What are the differences? The pros and cons? Costs? Which ones are the clients using? Does everybody have this downloaded? Are they good to go? That can take you anywhere from zero to six hours. With a completely browser-based software platform, then there's no downloads required. And if all of that is integrated within the process, then you're looking at zero to two hours uh, and, and more likely on, on your low end, like no time at all to log into the browser and there you go. Okay, what about teacher onboarding? This is always a process to ensure that, that whoever is teaching is familiar with the material, familiar with the interface, they can give a good class. You know, and doing that, you have to have a process in place to ensure consistency every time. Uh, because there's so many tools and there's so many different trainers, there might be different subjects or curriculum that you're teaching on, that onboarding process can be ad hoc or can have variable results. So time frame there, anyone from where from one to four hours, like every time this is done. Whereas if everything the teacher needs lives in one platform, which is like curriculum, training videos on how to use the platform. Maybe you've got training videos on how to give a good class or deal with uh, you know, weird questions or deal with uh, you know, people who are too fast or too slow or all these kinds of things. What if, you know, what if the course content, the polls, the quizzes, the evaluations, all of that stuff is within one platform? So we shave time off dramatically of having to train them where all of that stuff is and how to administer it because it's all right there. Okay, what about syncing calendars, setting up dates with the instructor and the students, getting everybody together at the same time? That's a lot of back and forth email, checking everyone's calendar. Oh, somebody had an emergency come up or well, they got to back out or well, can we find someone else to fill the class, right? So half an hour to three hours there. Okay, now what if we can sync automatically? The platform controls it, syncs to your calendar and sets it up, right? So now we've got much faster, um, or, or you know, much, much uh, faster times there. So, you know, more hours saved. Okay, curriculum management and distribution. This is another manual process. Getting the curriculum, sending it out, or making sure they know where to log in and where to get it. If it's all loaded into the class and it's available right there, you log into your platform, there's the class. Here's the curriculum right there on the right. It's not like you have to download it and save it, store it, find it, do all this communication. So again, We've shaved off time. Okay, what about administering pre-class pre work over email? Uh, so that could be like, hey, uh, here's a prereq. You need to work through this before a class. Okay, so how much time is spent doing that? Um, you know, or, or making sure that everyone is aware of what they need beforehand. One to four hours. Okay, if it's automatically sent out by the system, these are like automated communications, 
And then the, the actions and interactions are logged by the platform so that you can see who's seen it, what they've opened, what they've done, are they prepared? You know, is that all squared away? Okay, the dramatic uh, savings there on time. Okay, what about, okay, you've got a new course and you gotta let everybody know about it. Hey, who's interested? We've got this new course on this, or this is what the topics that we'll be covering. So you gotta set up a webinar to explain that. And oftentimes that webinar is not hooked to the course itself. So people take it, but then they've gotta to go to a different platform to register for the class and say, yes, I'm interested, this is what I wanna do. Right, so you might be using like Zoom or GoToWebinar, and then you might be using Eventbrite or some other, a Google form or something like this to record who's interested. Or maybe it's a manual email process. People are just shooting you a note saying, yeah, hey, I'd like to, to join that class. Okay, again, what if all of that is synced within one platform? Could you run the webinar and have signups and know who enrolled and all those kinds of analytics about that whole process all built in? So we've now taken like several hours down to no, no time at all. Okay, um, now then once we're actually like running the class when the class is live, okay, so there's several steps there that Curtis took us through the flowchart. So think about this, right? Make sure everyone is live in the class it's supposed to be. Some people don't show up, some people show up late, someone changes at the last minute, somebody else hops into the class. You had 12 people sign up, but only 10 show, and one of those was never on the roster to begin with. You know, like these kinds of things happen, and so then that start of class experience can be a little bit like, well, who showed up? And, you know, and then we need a roster at the end of class to figure out who actually was there so the right people get credit and for billing purposes and all of this. Okay, well, now within the platform, you can see a class roster automatically because it's tied to their login. So you automatically know who's there and who's not. And we can automatically create reminders that get, get uh, auto-generated and sent out to the people who didn't come. Okay, what about administering quizzes, tests, assessments, polls, all that? A lot of times that lives in a learning management system or is delivered via some other system. So that could be anywhere from very little time to a lot of time, kind of depending on how many classes, uh, how many students, uh, how, how much involvement you're doing. If they've got to do, um, you know, a test to, to show mastery of the material, well, who's grading that test and how's that being submitted? Is that done manually? Now it's all done on the same platform. So again, like we went from, you know, time spent collecting, grading, assessing, communicating follow-ups, no time at all. Okay, how about collaboration, right? Curtis mentioned this, that a lot of times we're talking in Zoom, but we might be running a, a group forum or team chat in Slack so that it can live beyond the, the session and then you know people can communicate questions. Maybe it's like, well, hey, where do we have this internally in our SharePoint or repository? Okay, well, that's like somewhere else, right? For, for people to, to be in. It's like, well, I can't find the Slack channel and how do I get there? Or, you know, I've got to log out of my Teams window to go back into my chat. That's clunky. Okay, it's all here. It's all integrated. So again, zero to five hours to no time at all. How about this, right? What if we want to deliver additional materials for learning outside the lesson? So oftentimes in a class, you might get a question it's like, that is a great question. We can't cover that right now, but uh, you know, we want you to work through this in preparation for our class tomorrow. And I'm gonna send you a blog post or an article or a practice exercise or something to work on before we begin tomorrow, begin the next course. Okay, so that, that's time, that's email, that's back and forth, that's Slack chats, that's, that's links, that's you know finding stuff in SharePoint. It's all there, right? So we go to no time at all, because it's, it's all on one platform. Okay, what if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching? You've got to coordinate that. Who needs help? Who wants like additional one-on-one -on -one time? When will the student and the instructor be online to provide that? Will that occur before or after class, or will that be like at some other time entirely? Okay, again, all that can be scheduled within. So at maximum, we're looking at an hour there. But again, we've shaved down time. Okay, what about if they need to complete coursework? You know, like let's say you've signed up for an intermediate or advanced class, and but you've got to fill seats. So, you know, you end up with 10 participants and four of them actually are not at an intermediate or advanced level. What do you do then? Do you slow the pace of the whole class down for everybody? Did you try to catch them up? Do you now have some people who are more advanced and they're a little frustrated by the pace, right? So offering some 
pre-coursework to say, okay, are you ready for this class? Can you handle this? Is a good thing. Well, depending on how many students are ready and the complexity of the material and how much follow-up is required and all this, that could be a lot of hours of work, follow-up, meeting with people, sitting down, trying to bring them up to speed. Again, we shave off a lot of time by having it all in one place. And it goes on and on. I mean, you can see these numbers all the way down. Administering course evals, it's all within the platform. The, the, how about um, gathering data and reporting back um, either you know, to internal stakeholders, to a client, to whomever on student performance. So how engaged were they? How well did they learn the material? How well are they demonstrating mastery? Did they enjoy the class? Was it a good learning environment? These kinds of things, that takes a lot of work. That might be surveys, that might be looking at test results. Now you've got to put it into a report with some charts and graphs and drop it into a PowerPoint. It's a lot of work, right? Okay, now like the system does all that for you because all the data is there. It's recorded by the platform. It can spit out the analytics into a nicely formatted report. You can give it to the client, you can give it to internal stakeholders. Everybody is happy. You know, they feel like, okay, we got value out of this investment. Okay. Now, what about if we have to schedule multiple Zoom sessions? What if you've got more than, you know, a, a hundred people or or in a class, right? Well, now you're running into limits. Uh, so now we need to break this into multiple classes with multiple instructors. Okay, and so then that's a challenge, right? And, and now that's more cost, have more instructors, more time, more coordination of all of the steps above when you're doing this on multiple fronts. There's no limits in our platform because we've run into this. So we eliminated limits. Okay, uh, and then also just ensuring that um, people come prepared and they've accomplished the right prereqs and everything. So now everything is, is integrated and you can choose who has which permissions as an admin. Can they access the course or not? Are they ready or not? Uh, so it's all there. We just shave off the time. And then Curtis mentioned the, the post class wrap up the follow up activities uh, where we want to ensure that students really retain the knowledge. Well, how do we do that? That's a process unto itself. And that could be emails, that could be follow ups, that could be a group discussion, surveys, assessments, like a lot of things could happen in this process. All that now is done directly within the platform. You can send out scheduled nudges, maybe in two weeks. Hey, everyone, just following up. You know, have you had a chance to implement what you've learned? Have you seen any gains in the software? Have you tried? We encourage you to uh, to you know implement what you've learned, and you know we'd love to hear some stories, right? You can collaborate on that, share the successes. All right, when that's all built into one platform, everybody can see that it drives engagement. Okay, now how about like upsell, cross sell? And again, this could be internal or it could be to a client. But either way, right? We're all selling, right? I mean, you know, we're all selling something sometimes. And, and so if, if training is what we are, are sharing with people, then, you know, we want them to take more training to improve their skills. Maybe that's, you know, they took the intro course and they should follow up with an intermediate or advanced course. Or maybe there's a complementary skill. Uh, they learned this and now they should learn that. Uh, so, you know, there's there's a lot of um, approaches here in terms of how do we decide who gets training on what? Well, if we leave that up to our salesperson and there's a lot of activity, something might fall through the cracks. But if you have a system that uses machine learning to recommend what would be the next step for any given student, well, that's really valuable. Now, you as a course deliverer knows uh, what uh, what people need and, and who should be in which classes. You know what classes need to be scheduled and when. Uh, it gives a salesperson, if, you, if you're actually selling courses, something to talk about that, that's valuable. It's based on data. OK, so again, we've shaved time, several hours of time combing through, trying to figure out when was the last training, what did they need, how many students might need to move forward, how many did well, how many were engaged. That's all there, and we, we've cut down half the time on that. Okay, now how about, okay, who, um, who attended, who didn't, right? We've got that, better analytics. Uh, who's taking the on-demand course uh, content, and, and, and you know, how do they do for their continuing education credits uh, or, or other kind of reporting purposes, right? A lot of time spent collating and running that down, printing out certificates and getting that to people. Now it's all there, it's all on the platform. So we just shave off time all the way down. So the total savings, if we were to, to look through everything here, uh, could be a lot of hours, 
right? So um, if you were running a um, hundred classes a month, let's say, um, and you might run more, you might run less. If we look at all of the time, and it's you know an hour here, an hour there, an hour this, but there's so many steps involved in the process by so many people. If you're running this many classes, you could be saving an, a huge amount of time. And even if our numbers are wrong, right? Even if they're wrong by a factor of 10, you're still saving a, a substantial amount of time, right? And, and you can download these and you can play with the numbers yourself and you can see how it affects, uh, how it affects the, the totals. So if, you know, if you're running uh, reporting, if that can help you improve your sales, if you have to run promotional webinars, all these kinds of things, you can kind of see how many hours it saves. You can put in what is the average hourly rate of staff working on this, and then you can see the amount of money that's saved by using an all-in-one platform. So um, those are some of our thoughts in terms of, of the steps involved and how much time could be saved by automating everything in one platform that's got the logic built in to like help you automate as much as you can. So again, we've done this. We've run these processes manually or through a lot of systems, and we have seen dramatic reductions by us running it all through one platform. So uh, Curtis, I'll, I'll turn it back to you. Uh, we also see, in, in addition to the time and efficiency savings, and obviously that <laughs> equates to money, um, but there's also sales gains that can be achieved here um, because of the fact that now that you're using an integrated system, Ryan touched on this, now you have the ability to kind of see, well, what course should come next? And what should we be suggesting next? And how? let's do a webinar where the platform has both the webinar and the upsell that people want to take, right? So we took some time as well to look through and think through what, what the old sales process looks like when you're trying to use a ton of different tools versus what does a sales process look like when everything is integrated right and what are the differences there and what do we think the gains are that you can see and so this is also in the pricing calculator that ryan showed you uh, which is free to download on the site you can download that play with the assumptions put in your own company's metrics and see what the lift might be for you um, depending on kind of how you operate but in general, what we see here is, is you know, a couple stages where we might see some gains. Again, in the preparation stage where, you know, number one here, you know, you're meeting on the training platform to sell the training that's going to be on that platform. So instead of meeting on whatever platform or over the phone or on Teams or something and explaining the training, or you just meet on the platform that you're going to deliver the training on. So the client not only sees what the training is, they can see what it looks like, they can see the quizzes, they can see the materials, they can see all the features of the platform, they can see all the reporting that they're gonna get, everything is right there. And all of that adds up to not only are they buying a course, but they're buying everything surrounding that course that helps it be a success. That's pretty powerful. Okay, and then all the course materials, they're already there, they're already visible. You don't have to say, well, we'll send those in an email or we'll gather those. It's all there, it's all managed. It's right there on the call, ready to go student preparation and making sure that they're ready for the course that's all tracked and visible so that again the client can see yeah we're making progress here so we think all of those things equate to about a one to ten percent lift again depending on how you operate your business you could see something within that range in closing deals okay and then you move on to actually giving the course student performance on the course is tracked and visible again this is another perk of having everything together is the client or or the organization can see the progress of each student at any given time they don't have to wait to get reports from you they don't have to get a report in a spreadsheet that they can't understand all they got to do is log in it's all in the system and they can track what's going on and they can maybe make some course corrections during the length of the course to say hey like this person isn't performing as well how can we help them out and they can drive for better outcomes okay that's going to give you a sales game okay and then what happens after the course so, okay, usually, again, like you sort of, you're running lots of courses, you're trying to figure out who to contact next, what to sell to them. It's usually a, a big mess and, and no one really gets everything efficient. But in this system, because we know all the students and we know what they've taken and we know their grades, we can then suggest automatically courses that would be good for them. We know the goals of the, uh, of the buying organization. And there's two ways that this can happen now. One is, you can see the recommendations or your sales team can, and they can take that directly to the client and say, hey, look, these people took this class. This one's the next one in line. 
they got good grades. These were the outcomes, and, and this is the outcome we're going to see if they take this next course. Or just like you see on Amazon, the client sees it themselves. So in the system itself, it serves up the next recommended course. And so you may get people calling you and saying, hey, we want to run this next course. We just did this course. We had great outcomes. We see this is the next one in line, or we see this adjacent skill. It's in the system. So I thought I'd call and, and see if we can run that course. So again, like serving up recommendations to the client at the point of them looking at the reporting and feeling good that a course went well is a really good opportunity for another cell. And, and to move, again, move those students along a path that's going to get them better at their jobs, which makes everyone, you know, everyone wins in that scenario. I just want to hop in and, and say, just think about that for a second. Think about how you are delivering uh, your sales process currently to sell courses. And maybe that's, maybe that's to an external client, or maybe you um, are a learning and development uh, leader and you're selling a course internally to other students or to particular divisions. If you hop on the platform and you show exactly what, um, uh, what is there, what's present, you show the curriculum, you show the quizzes, the mid-course eval, they've got a sense of the whole experience. It's visceral. Whereas if, if otherwise it's conceptual, we, we talk about it, well, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, and they all have to conceive of this in their minds. Now they can see it, they can touch it, like before they've ever purchased, they can see it, touch it, they see what's there, they see that curriculum. Now think how many of, of, of your competitors or other people are doing this, are, are, are having an experience like that before you've ever even gone in the classroom. Are they more likely to want to buy because they can see it and touch it and know how it's going to be? And then, and then you know, to have the analytics, to be able to see like, okay, what should be the next course? Why do we think that is? Who should take it, right? Isn't that valuable intel for your salespeople? Like that's huge. I wish that we've had this all along. Uh, so although COVID has been crazy, in some ways it is, you know, like necessity is the mother of all, innova of all innovation, right? So uh, I wish that we've had this. I'm glad that we have it now. So just think about what could that do in your process? And then Curtis has here, uh, based on the percentages we just showed you, uh, what could the possible gain be by using a tool like this in your sales process to get it sold and keep it sold and sell more courses? Right. And again, these are all available. You can download the calculators and play with the assumptions and, and see for your own business what, what it could be. But, but pretty substantial gains is what we're seeing there. So the bottom line is what we've been talking about here. Yes, it, it's possible. We've gone through all the steps. We've thought through everything that needs to be done. We've seen this in our own business. We've seen it in a lot of our channel partners business. A lot of the information you just saw came not only from our experience, but also from several other companies that have been in, in this business for decades. And so we calculated all that out. And yes, we feel like these percentages are actually very conservative to what you could gain if everything is integrated into one. Um, and that's that's what we want to deliver. So we we are solely focused on delivering a platform that gives a, a amazing virtual training experience. There's a lot of stuff out there like Zoom that's a virtual meeting tool, or there's LMSs which are on-demand tools, and there's Slack which is a collaboration tool, but nothing really is focused on, on optimizing the entire virtual training experience. And that's what that's what we're all about. 